welcome back to Pop Horror. I'm going to be reviewing The Day After Halloween, the new film that's kind of dropped, I think about a week ago. I'm getting into it now as we get closer to October, the Halloween month, where people start adding to their movies and their TV series list, maybe new ones and golden oldies, the ones that you love to watch during Halloween or the Halloween month, people start prepping in September. And if you're like me, any excuse to get into that Halloween month, this is not really a horror. It has horror aspects it's more of a comedy and the best way for me to describe it is if you've seen the original clerks movie you take the dialogue and scripting from that movie and you put it in the night before halloween in a party that kind of sees everything going wrong we have characters at a driving we have the manager who manages the driving and owns the subsequent house that's attached to the property he has a girlfriend of a long time. Can imagine this was an editing nightmare. What I mean by that is every now and again, you'll see a stopwatch, which gives you an indication as to how long ago you're watching that particular scene. So it jumps all over like the timey wimey Time Lord does. If he, if he had a TARDIS, then he would be watching this film and he'd probably be confused. Don't worry, it keeps going back to the main arc and it kind of puzzle pieces it together. One of the drawbacks of this film, however, is its budgeting. And you can see that through the colorization of how the film looks in itself and also the audio. At times, it's very tinny. It's very feels like it hasn't had the expense that it needed for some of those rooms. Now, that isn't a massive detriment because some of the colorization issues could be excused as to when it's being shown. So what time zone we are in, what time zone the viewer is watching, whatever is happening on screen, what they are showcasing in that moment. So when they jump back, it could be a while ago and they show it through a different color tempo. And then it's a coming back to the nighttime or, you know, just a little bit a while ago. So you can get away with that sort of colorization. It's not a massive issue. Obviously, it didn't have like millions to make it uh, you know, a Hollywood blockbuster or a film. And I think if it had, then you wouldn't have had the same feeling or scripting dialogue amazingness that there often is at times in this film, which took me by surprise because I was thinking, hmm, this could be pretty bad because I watched the first few minutes of this and thought, where is this going? I'm not sure this is going to be good. It had an indie feel, but on the cheaper side. Thankfully, as you get going into that dialogue, we often find our characters just shooting the shit with each other. They're sitting on a couch on top of the driving is, and if you've ever been to a driving, it's one of my fondest memories that there's a, a nostalgic feeling. If you, Where I'm recording this in the UK, there are no drivings or there are pop-up drivings, but not like you used to get in South Africa or what are in America at the moment. So there's a nice nostalgic feeling to it. And some of the score has a bit of nostalgia. They also hark back during this film to other great films. Because it's set in Halloween, you see people wearing different costumes as well because it's a dress up party. There are moments where it harks or gives nods to other films like Die Hard. There's, they had a lot of fun with the script and you definitely get that feeling as you're watching the film. You thought, OK, when they were writing this, they were probably cracking up and going, yeah, this is a great dialogue moment. And I think for the most part, the actors also give on delivering what you expect to see. There were a lot of times I also went, where is this going? I do feel it's a bit long in the tooth and you'll understand my pun when you watch the movie. However, I had a lot of fun with this, much more than I was expecting. It might be a one-time watch for me, but it's definitely a worthwhile one-time watch. It might also garner a cult classic status as people start to watch it and they go to the theaters to watch this or it's on every year and people start talking about it. That's kind of how it was with Clerks or The Evil Dead even, you know, these guys that had a passion for film that kind of maxed out their credit cards and got some funding together and put together a movie that was interesting. This has a very interesting style of editing, has a very interesting style of dialogue. Even in the end, it still kept me being surprised because of how they were showcasing what was going on in screen, giving us surprises even as the credits rolled. And I thought they were very brave with what they do. So whenever a film can surprise me and try something new and different in amongst a very tired and very much done genre, I, you know, I applaud, I go, yeah, well done for trying something different and, you know, stepping out there. It's really hard to put a film together, get a budget together and actually deliver on something with a tight, tight budget and it'd be okay. 
It is a film that I'm not sure I'll ever go back to personally, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Let me know your thoughts about this. Have you even heard about this one? Are you going to check it out yourself? Maybe put it on your Halloween month list. I think you should. I love the creativity within this. I could see some stuff coming from a mile away, but I still wanted that stuff to happen. Not doing spoilers, I enjoyed the first three quarters of this movie more than the end because I knew what was happening and I kind of wanted to see them do something more and be braver with the end. But actually actually building the story together like they did I think it worked out really well so if I were to rate this out of five I'd give it a solid three and a half thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next time